In this video, I'll be going over a common problem that I faced while setting up pole vectors on IK handles. You can see that here on my scene, I have two joint chains, which are pretty much the same, except that on the second joint chain, the one that's currently selected, the elbow has orient values not only on Y, but also on Z. For you to have a better idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and select my arm, elbow, and wrist binds for the lower chain, and also the same joints for the upper chain. I'm going to bring up my attribute spreadsheet, and here you can see all the values that are relevant in this situation. You see that the translate x for all of these joints have values on them, but translate y and translate z are completely clean, as are rotates and scales. Now the main thing to pay attention to here are the joint orient values. You'll see that for my first chain, there are joint orient values for x, y, and z for the arm, and then only for y on my elbow bind, and no values for my wrist bind. For the second chain, however, you'll see what I was talking about before. There are joint orient values for x, y, and z for the arm, but the elbow also has orient values for the z axis. This means that this chain is not on a single plane, unlike this one. Typically, it's good for you to keep your arm and leg chains like this first example we have here. But sometimes, because of the way things are modeled, or whatever reasons you might have, you may need to have that second orient value. And when that happens, you may have some issues with your pull vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the difference is with these two chains. I'm going to start off with the first example. I'm going to duplicate this just for the sake of reference later on. And I'm going to go ahead and set up my IK handle. If I turn my duplicate of this chain back on, you'll see that everything is still in the right place. And then I'm going to go ahead and reset up this locator over here. All I did to place this was I snapped it to the elbow bind on this chain, and then I moved it back. That's all it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and select that and the IK handle and use a pull vector constraint. Now you'll see that both versions of this chain are still on, and they both match. They're exactly the same. And the pull vector also works. Now, if I try using the same method on the top chain, again, I'll duplicate it for the sake of reference, and hide it for now. If I snap this locator to the elbow and then move it back the same way I did with the lower chain, and I try setting up my IK handle, I'll turn the visibility on the second chain back on just so you can see that nothing got moved when the IK handle was set up. Now, if I use this locator, which was snapped to the elbow and moved back, and then I set up the pull vector constraint again, you'll see that you'll get values on your joint. Obviously, you don't want that. You want your values to be completely clean. A way that you can avoid this is by selecting your arm and wrist joints, and then whatever you're going to be using to control your pull vector, and point constraining it between the two of them. You'll want maintain offset to be off, and that will place your control object right in the center of your joint chain. After you've done that, you can go ahead and get rid of the point constraint. And what you'll want to do next is select your elbow joint, and then your pull vector control object once more. And then you'll be setting up an aim constraint with your default settings, maintain offset off. And with the constraint still present, you'll push it back. Make sure you get rid of the constraint after you move it back. So that might not necessarily be the best position for your control object, but if I go into that object, select my IK handle, and set up my pull vector constraint, 
you'll see that nothing is snapping now. And if you go into your joints and you take a look at them in the attribute spreadsheet, you'll see that there are no rotate values, which was the case when we set it up before with the first method. Keep this in mind while setting up your character whenever you're rigging. If possible, try keeping your arm and leg joints all on a single plane. Now, if for any reason you can't avoid having a second orient on your joint, you can use this method to make sure that your chains won't get any values on them or snap in any way whenever you set up your pull vector.